Welcome back to Chapter 9, Section 6. In this section, we're going to be looking at the quadratic formula and also the discriminant. This will allow us to fairly easily find the solutions of any quadratic equation. So we don't need to be able to factor it or anything like that. Um, and this refines the, the ideas and topics from sections four, three, four, and five. So our learning targets, I can use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. Well, what is the quadratic formula? So the quadratic formula is going to give us the, the solutions from the standard form of the equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. What we're going to do here is we're going to use a couple of the topics from the previous sections, and we're going to figure out what x equals here. So the very first step is um, we're going to complete the square. This is a topic from a previous section. We're not doing it specifically in this section, but um, it's how we get to the quadratic formula. So to complete the square, we're going to subtract c from both sides. So we have ax squared plus bx equals, equals negative c. Now we're going to factor out that a value. So we'll have a times x squared plus, when we factor out an a from the b, it's just division, b over a x equals negative c. Now notice I left a space here. That's part of the completing the squares process because this next step, we're going to do two steps here at the same time because we're going to end up with something squared down here. So x times x will equal x squared. So that's going to have to be x. Now what's going to happen here is this number, we're going to divide this by 2. So when we do that, we get plus b over 2a. Now, we, we just added something here, kind of. We divided by 2. If we took this x plus b over 2a and squared it, so we have x plus b over 2a times x plus b over 2a, we would get x squared plus b over a times x plus this b over 2a squared. So we have to square this now. So this is going to be b squared over 4a squared because we had to square the whole thing. If we multiply that over there, or if we add that there, we have to add it to the other side. But the other side, we actually have this times a out in front as well. So we'll add a times b squared over 4a squared. So that leaves us, it doesn't combine at all, negative c plus a b squared over 4a squared. So here we have completed the square. What we're left with is a times this x plus b over 2a squared minus or equals negative c plus a b squared over 4a squared. Um, we're going to continue completing the square really quick, but or in a second. But first, I'm going to come up here. We're going to add c and subtract the, that a b squared over 4a squared to the other side. Um, because I did make a promise to you earlier on in the year. You might not remember what it was, but I do. So this is the vertex form of a quadratic make that y. The vertex here 
is going to be negative b over 2a comma then this whole mess or the axis of symmetry is x equals remember we have to change the sign on that negative b over 2a the promise was i would show you where that came from because of the time you just had to trust me you just had to believe me but i hate that reason because i should be able to show you the reason why this happens this is the reason we can write an equation in vertex form from standard form it uses the completing the square process um, when there's numbers here it's a little bit prettier but we don't have numbers in this one we just have the a b and c so it's a little bit ugly all right so back to solving for x so we have this a times this whole thing squared equals negative c over a b squared negative c plus a b squared over 4a squared um, to solve for x we're going to divide by a we have to do that to everything so over here we're left we have a plus or x plus b over 2a squared equals this is negative c over a plus and then the a and this a cancel out so we have plus b squared over 4a squared next thing we have is we can square root both sides that's another topic from uh, one of those previous sections we have something squared equals something we can square root both sides but when we do we get plus or minus because it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative when we square it we're going to get that positive number so we have to include both of them so this means that x plus b over 2a will equal plus or minus the square the square root and we're going to um, combine these guys let's make a common denominator for common denominator here we're going to have to multiply by 4a multiply by 4a so we will have the square root of the denominator will be 4a squared and the numerator we have negative c times 4a plus b squared i'm going to reverse the order there b squared minus 4ac um, when we have a, um, a square root of a fraction just like when we have an exponent of a fraction we can do the top and the bottom separately now the top isn't really going to change at all so we'll have plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac but divided by the square root of 4a squared square root of 4 is 2 square root of a squared is a now we can subtract this b over 2a so we're left with x equals we have a common denominator so we can go negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a that is the quadratic formula now the nice thing is we don't need to find it every time in fact you don't need to find it at all really you just this is so that you see where it comes from so it's not just some sort of magic uh, we're manipulating the equation and we can solve for x so we get x equals these we can plug it in a um, couple things to notice here we have this negative b over 2a that's the axis of symmetry right that's what we i pointed out here then plus or minus something so we're going to go the same direction both ways because it is symmetric so we're starting at the vertex or the axis of symmetry and going both directions there all right let's see how this is used um, because we're not going to find it we are going to use it however so we have x squared plus 6x plus 5 equals 0. Um, the quadratic formula again 
if you have forgotten it from the last page, is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We could factor this one. This could get factored into x plus 5, x plus 1, which x plus 5 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0, so we'd end up with x equals negative 5 or x equals negative 1. So we could factor this one, solve it that way. Generally speaking, if you can do that, do that. Factoring is the easiest, simplest way to solve a quadratic. Um, if you can factor it, but you can't always factor it. Or sometimes, maybe it will factor, but it's not particularly easy. Um, I know people ask me a lot how long it takes me to factor stuff. The answer is a few seconds, because if I don't see how to factor it within a few seconds, I'm gonna use a quadratic formula, because it doesn't scare me. Um, so why would we start out with an example like this that we could solve by factoring? because the numbers are going to be nicer. Let's practice one of these with nice numbers as opposed to jumping straight to ugly numbers. So we need our A, our B, and our C. A equals one, B equals six, C equals five. Notice it is important that it's equal to zero. If this was not yet equal to zero, we would need to add or subtract to make it equal to zero. All right, now we're just going to plug these in. x equals negative b. b was 6, so we'll have negative 6. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 6 squared. Minus 4 times a was 1, times c was 5. All over 2 times a, which was 1. So x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root. 6 squared is 36. 4 times 1 times 5 is 20, so we have minus 20 over 2. 36 minus 20 is 16, so we have square root of 16 over 2. Um, what is the square root of 16? The square root of 16 is 4, so x will be negative 6 plus or minus 4 divided by 2. We have two answers. We have negative 6 plus 4 divided by 2, we have negative 6 minus 4 divided by 2. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10, divided by 2 is negative 5. So notice we came out to the same exact answers. Um, the uh, factoring was easier. However, factoring requires thinking. It's, there's not like any special like fancy formula that allows you to factor stuff. Quadratic formula, it's not so much thought, it's plug and chug. We put it into the equation, we do our computations, we're done. So um, it does take more work, especially if it's an easier problem, but that work does not increase as the problem gets harder. So let's look at another one, x squared minus 4x minus 7. So in this case, a equals 1, b equals negative 4, c equals negative 7. So we can plug it in. x equals negative b. b is already negative, so that's going to be positive 4. Plus or minus the square root of b squared is negative 4 squared minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 7 all over 2 times 1. So we have 4 plus or minus the square root negative 4 squared is 16 because negative times negative is a positive. Then negative 4 times 1 times negative 27 is going to be plus 28 over 2. 16 plus 28 is 44. So we have square root of 44 over 2. And we can reduce the square root of 44. Um, but if we need a 
decimal, the reducing it doesn't matter. So we have um, square root of 44, 44 is 4 times 11. Square root of 4 is 2, so this is 2 times 2 times 11, so, which means that root 44 is going to be 2 root 11. So we can change that to be 4 plus or minus 2 root 11 over 2. We can div Both of those are even. We can divide them both by 2. We'll have 4 over 2 is 2, plus or minus 2 over 2 is 1, so we have plus or minus root 11. So that'll be 2 plus root 11 and 2 minus root 11, which means our our values here we have 2 plus root 11 is going to be 5.316 3166 we'll go 317 and then 2 minus root 11 is going to be negative 1.3 yeah, negative 1.3166, so negative 1.317. Um, and again, that anytime you're dealing with roots like that, you're going to use a calculator. That's okay. It's expected. So that's how to use the quadratic formula. We just plug it in. Um, application. So the function shows represents the height of the frog x seconds after it jumps off a rock. How many seconds is the frog in the air before it lands on the ground? So we have y equals negative 16t squared plus 10t plus 0.75. That gives us a is negative 16, b equals 10, c equals 0.75. Um, could we factor this? I don't know, maybe, but it looks hard. Like having that 0.75, the negative 16 for the a value, that's tough. So let's throw it in the quadratic equation, quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, that'll be negative 10, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 10 squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 16, times c, which is 0.75, all over 2 times a, a was negative 16, which means x equals negative 10 plus or minus the square root. 10 squared is 100. Let's see, we'll have a negative times a negative, so this will be a positive. Uh, 4 times 16 times 0.75 is going to be 48. All over negative 32. So 100 plus 48 is 148, so we have negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 148 over negative 32. We can, um, we can find these values in, uh, in decimal form. Um, when you're doing this and you're using a calculator, I recommend doing it piece by piece so that you make sure that you have everything where it needs to be. So first I'd go negative 10 plus root 148 equals, that's 2.16 something something. All right, now we can divide by negative 32 to get negative 0 0.0676 which is kind of weird it's almost zero but it's also negative where is that that's just right here that's when it's jumping like right when it jumps so we're looking for the other one so we'll have negative 10 minus root 148 gives us negative 22 point something divide by negative 32 gives us 
So the frog is in the air for 0.6928 seconds. And so that's how we can use it to um, solve a problem. But I mean, again, it's we have the equation. We just plugged it into the quadratic formula. Um, it didn't matter that we had um, that we had a situation here. It just plug it into the quadratic formula. It's the same as we did on the last page. Um, the last thing we're going to look at is the discriminant. Now, this is a big word. It just means that inside part of the square root. What happens here? Like, why would we care about the discriminant? This tells how many solutions we have. We get two solutions if the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is bigger than zero. Because we have that plus and minus, so we get those two different numbers. We get one solution if the solution is the vertex, which means it would just be negative b over 2a, because we'd end up with plus or minus zero. So what square root gives us zero? Zero. So b squared minus 4ac equals zero. So when that happens, we have only that one solution. And then if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, if it's negative, we have a square root of a negative number, which you've been taught is not a good thing because we don't get a solution. We have no real solutions. So it's no solutions but it's really no real solutions. Um, in Algebra 2, we will learn what, we, what actually happens there. Um, but that's all the discriminant is. It's the stuff that's inside the square root. If it's zero, you get one solution. If it's positive, you get two solutions. And if it's negative, you get no solutions. That's it. So. Um, this has been the quadratic formula. Again, the using it is what's important. Um, how to find it, that's not quite as important. So if you didn't follow along with that all that well, that's okay. Um, but being able to use it is important and very, very useful. So I will see you in class. But until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.